Welcome back to Daper's Milling Training video series, where we introduce important concepts for milling that will help you achieve the best performance from your cutting tools. In today's video, we'll focus on how to choose good speed and feed ranges from your cutting tool catalog for programming your milling tool. Cutting tool manufacturers offer many different carbide grades and cutting geometries for shops to use in various material groups. Now, most cutting tool catalogs and websites will provide data with suggested starting points for applying the tools. Now, these suggestions will generally include carbide grade descriptions, cutting edge geometry descriptions, recommended speeds per material group, and recommended feeds per material group, as well as the cutting edge type. This is an example of a cutting tool speed and feed chart. Now, every cutting tool manufacturer does it a bit differently, but some basic information will typically be present. The various ISO material groups will be identified, and the available carbide grades from the manufacturer will be shown as being either suitable or unsuitable for that material group. Now, for each matching carbide grade and material, a range of speeds in surface feet per minute and feed rates in inches per tooth should be shown. The program speed in revolutions per minute and the feed in inches per minute will be calculated from these numbers. Now this chart may also indicate a recommended cutting edge geometry to use for each material group. Now it's important to feed within the recommended range shown for that cutting tool. Feeding the tool at more than the recommended feed per tooth could result in tool breakage. Feeding less than the recommended range could cause premature wear material work hardening, and poor productivity. The speed range is a bit less volatile. Too high of a speed will shorten tool life. Too low of a speed, while lengthening the tool life, will decrease productivity. Daypro recommends starting at roughly a midpoint in the recommended speed range for that material group, and then gauging results based on achieved versus desired tool life since every shop has different priorities in regards to productivity versus tool life the ideal speed will vary from shop to shop now when machining softer materials taking lighter cuts or using smaller diameter cutting tools you're creating less heat so the higher end of the recommended speed ranges could be possible however when cutting harder materials or taking heavier cuts in softer materials or when using larger diameter cutting tools more heat is being created. So choosing a speed in the lower end of the recommended range can often be the best choice. For the feed ranges, a heavier feed per tooth may be possible when machining softer materials, taking lighter cuts, or using a larger, stronger cutting tool. A lighter feed per tooth is typically recommended when cutting hardened material, taking heavier cuts, or when using a smaller diameter cutting tool, which is weaker. So to summarize briefly, if your application will involve performing heavier cuts or the machining of harder materials within a material type, you can expect that both higher heat and increased tool pressure will result. Now to protect against this, select a lower speed in surface feet per minute and a lower feed in feed per tooth for your program, at least to start. Now if you expect your application to involve a lighter cut, as is the case for finishing cuts, or is in a softer material within a material group, you should be able to expect less heat and less tool pressure as a result. As such, you can feel more comfortable programming your cutting tool to a higher speed and feed within the recommended ranges. Find all of that too involved or confusing? Well, a very good rule of thumb is to always start with a tough grade of carbide to avoid chipping or tool damage. Start with the middle point of the recommended speed range and the lower end of the feed range and program for a lighter depth of cut. All of these steps will typically generate wear versus more significant damage, allowing for gradual increases or changes as results are measured. Using the cutting data provided by your cutting tool manufacturer is a critical step to success in your milling applications. They design the tool, so why not use the parameters they recommend, at least for starters. You can always speed things up to improve productivity. Just keep in mind that tool life and productivity are frequently opposing forces. Now in our next video, we'll look at how to select a good carbide grade for your application. Thanks for watching.